Hi, I'm Fran. And I'm Hannah. We're from Freshwater Habitats Trust. Today we're going to show you how to use an eDNA kit to survey for great crested newts as part of the People, Ponds and Water PondNet project. At each pond we're asking you to collect a water sample using an eDNA kit and also asking you to complete a pond habitat survey form. To do both the eDNA sample and the pond habitat survey form will take about an hour. In the eDNA kit you will find two pairs of sterile gloves, a sterile 30 milliliter ladle, a sterile one liter well pack bag, a sterile 10 milliliter pipette, and a box containing six sterile 15 milliliter tubes, two thirds full of alcohol preserving fluid. Please use a fresh kit for every pond you sample to avoid cross contamination. You will also need the survey protocol and eDNA recording form. Before we take the sample, we need to complete the paperwork. Firstly, write down the names of everyone who's taking part in the survey today. Please give your first and last name. Write down the pond name and grid reference, which you can find on your site information pack, and don't forget to include the date. Then we need to write the kit number from the side of the box containing the eDNA testing tubes into the space provided on the form. It's super important to write the same information we have written on the form on the label on the side of the eDNA sample kit. This is so that we can keep track of the kits when they return to the lab to be analysed. Now we're ready to begin the eDNA sampling process. We need to identify 20 locations around the pond where we can collect a water sample. Try to spread them out evenly, collecting from both open water and vegetated areas. And try to avoid sampling from very shallow water less than 10 centimetres deep where you might pick up pond sediment, which is contaminated with old rather than recent newt DNA. Only collect a sample where it's safe to do so, and it's important not to go in the water, as this could contaminate the sample with newt DNA from another site. I've got Hannah with me as well, because it's safer to undertake the sample in pairs. Please read the health and safety advice on the website before you undertake the survey. Put on the first pair of sterile gloves. Then, take out the sample ladle and the well pack bag. To open the well pack bag, unfold it, tear off the strip along the top, and pull it open using the tabs like this. The bag will stand up by itself when full, but on uneven surfaces, it helps to have someone else to hold it for you. Sometimes, as is the case at this pond, it is difficult to reach the water from the bank due to a muddy margin or vegetation growing at the edge of the water. We don't want to contaminate the sample by going in the water, so we'll attach the ladle to a pole instead, using elastic bands or twine. You could use a walking stick, bamboo pole or any sturdy stick for this. The only thing to remember is, after you've finished, don't use the same stick at another pond without cleaning it first, because you could cross-contaminate eDNA samples between water bodies. There's a bit of an art to collecting a water sample. DNA is heavy and tends to sink, so I'm going to use the ladle to very gently mix the water column from the surface to close to the bottom, but without disturbing the mud at the bottom, which could contaminate the sample. We can see here Fran has collected a sample that is not full of sediment. Once you have taken the sample, pour it into the well pack bag. Repeat this process at each of your 20 sampling locations and pour each sample into the well pack bag. Once 20 samples have been taken, fold down the bag and fold in the top tabs. Then, shake the well pack bag for 10 seconds. This mixes any DNA across the whole water sample. Now we put on a fresh pair of gloves to keep things sterile. Unwrap the sample pipette. Use the pipette to draw up water from the well pack bag and pipette it into one of the sterile tubes containing the preservative fluid. Fill the tube up to the 50 milliliter mark so the water solution reaches the top of the arrows. Tighten the cap securely, but be careful not to over tighten as you will break the thread and shake the tube for 10 seconds to make sure the DNA is mixed with the preservative. Now we shake the well pack bag again and fill the other five tubes the same way, making sure to mix the well pack bag each time as the DNA can sink to the bottom. And we're done. We can empty the remaining water from the well pack bag back into the pond. It's a good idea to keep the box the right way up from now on, because very occasionally the tubes can leak. That was a pretty straightforward pond to sample, but it's not always quite as easy. This other pond shows a very common situation. Here, there's a bank of scrub around the far side of the pond. This means we can't take 20 samples evenly around the edge of the pond. In this case, you just sample the areas you can get to. Still take 20 samples, but note the access problem on the recording form. We've finished sampling our ponds. I'm going to take these boxes home 
and keep them in a cool place out of direct sunlight until they're ready to be collected. Or you can drop them off at one of our pre-arranged collection points. Your eDNA samples will be couriered to France to be analysed by SpyGen, who are international leaders in the field of eDNA testing. We'll email everyone's results back to them in September. Thank you for watching. You can find out more by reading the eDNA protocol, which comes with your eDNA kit, or by contacting us via freshwaterhabitats.org.uk.